Hi friends, today we're going to take this stack of plates that I've been collecting while out thrifting and making and make a beautiful wall display in our bedroom. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you decided to join us. My name is Cindy and I'm with ReinventedDelaware.com. We love to repurpose and reinvent all sorts of thrift store finds and then we love to share these projects with you. This project has a couple of steps, so let's get started. First, I collected all of these plates over the last few months. Then I traced the shape and the size of the plates onto brown butcher paper. I wanted to create a really beautiful wall display, so what I did was I jumped over to this online site called Canva. It is a free program to use online, no charge at all. I'll link it down below in case you wanna do something like this. Anyway, I created all these little designs to represent the ironstone plates and the silver platters that I have, plus the little fireplace that we have in our bedroom. That way I could rearrange them and <laughs> rearrange them again and again and again until I got my design just right. Once I decided the placement of all of these plates and I made sure that I had all of those brown papers cut out, you see them there on my bed, then it was time to put them up on the wall. I used this Canva design that I created on my laptop. I set it beside my work area and I just used that as my guide of where to place all of these papers. I started off with this largest, the largest piece. It's an oval mirror that I bought while out thrifting. It's gorgeous, I can't wait for you to see it. And then I just worked out from there and I did some guesswork. I didn't do a lot of measuring, but the guide that I used on my Canva template worked wonderfully. So using that Canva template was a great starting point, but I found out something that I did not account for. When I measured for my Canva template, I should have gone from the front of the measurement. You saw me laying the plates in silver platters, you know, upside down, and then I traced around them. Well, when I measured them, I didn't really measure them accurately. So some of my measurements on my Canva template over here were not accurate like the ones here that you see in the board. I'm going to go back to my Canva template, change out those numbers and those measurements because I have to do some adjusting. You see, I have some blank spots and it's not exactly what I envisioned because what I have on that Canva board is what I wanna get on this wall. Back to the drawing board, so to speak. Here's what I've come up with so far. Now what I'm going to do is live with this for a couple of days before I go any farther. I just wanna be sure of placement. Let me just point out a couple of things. What I tried to do was start with the largest pieces, that's the mirror, and then the two largest platters that I have. And then I worked out from there. I tried to keep the graduated sizes out. In other words, that little one up there is the smallest iron stone. I think it's seven inches. And then the ones mixed in towards the center of the design are more in the area of like the 10 inch size and the 11 inch size on the silver. I would really love these to trail off smaller, but I don't have any, so that's okay. I'm kind of liking this look. I would love to know what you think. I'm gonna leave this up here just like this for a day or so. I'm gonna get my plates washed, my silver pieces washed and cleaned. I don't think I'm going to polish the silver. I'm kind of, whoops, I'm kind of liking the way that it looks now. But the pieces have to be cleaned and then I have to prepare them for the hangers that I'm going to use. And that is these. I'm going to leave all the information well, I'm just gonna tell you about this company, first of all, but I'm gonna leave all the information down in the description.
It's a couple days later and I'm still working on this project. Now that's the reality of doing these sorts of projects. It doesn't just happen all in one day. Even though it might look like that in a video, it really can take a while. And in this instance, I'm glad that it has taken several days because after I got everything laid out, I completely forgot about those gorgeous candle sconces that I found out thrifting. I'll link that video so you don't miss it. But let me show you up close what we're doing. By the way, you can see the mirror. You can see me in it. That's so funny. You can see the mirror. I went ahead and hung that because that was like the, the foundation of this whole art artwork that I'm putting up with these plates and ironstone and all that. But let me show you these brass candlesticks that I almost forgot to make room for. You may remember these. Now you can see one is polished and one isn't. This is what I bought at a thrift store. Um, I'm going to try to pop in the price of what I paid for these, but the price was unbelievable because they are solid brass and they both came with the glass globe. Imagine with me because I only have one hand, that glass globe, and then the, we'll put the polished one up, and then the sconce. So I'm going to hang it kind of low in comparison to the mirror to allow room right there for the glass globe and the candle. So I'm bearing that in mind on either side. So one on this side and then one on that side. But I think that's going to be just so pretty. In this instance, like I said, I'm glad that I didn't get this all finished in one day because I would have not left room for those candle sconces and oh, that would have just driven me bonkers. The downfall about it, oh, there, this is always pros and cons, right? The downfall about me taking so long to get this project finished is that now I have forgotten what plate goes where. And I do have it all mapped out. You saw those brown papers. They all have the measurements and that corresponds with that little uh, graphic that I made to, you know, digitally get it all figured out where everything goes. But now what I'm doing, I'm getting ready to add the, um, the holders that go on the back of the plate. And I wanna be sure of what I've got going on. So here's the situation. I have all my plates, all my silver dishes and all that, but I can't remember what is what. Some of my sizes are really close. I made a list of everything that's on the actual wall and I, I listed them all out here. Now I'm going to use a little post-it note and I'm going to label everything so that I don't get so confused Let's talk about how I'm going to hang these gorgeous plates on that wall. This has been fun to collect all these in different sizes and designs. No two are the same. I love the variation. This is going to be a beautiful wall display, but I want a safe way to hang these vintage and antique pieces. Now the silver is not necessarily vintage. Well, it might be vintage, but it's just silver plate. I still think they're beautiful, but I want them to hang on that wall without crashing down, of course. So Vanessa from the flat Irons Disc Company. She's a company, a small woman owned business out of Boulder, Colorado, and she provides these amazing discs. Now she's a supplier. These discs have been around for over 40 years. They come from England and they are made specifically for hanging beautiful vintage plates and antique plates like you see here, all these ironstone pieces. Well, Vanessa heard about this wonderful display that I wanted to do and she sent me over a package of these with all sorts of sizes and Let's just talk about that. You need different sizes depending on the size of the plate and the weight of the plate. For instance, this plate here is pretty large. It's 15 inches at the widest point and it weighs about three pounds. So she sent the really large disc. This is the five and a half inch. We're gonna talk about what's on the back here in just a second, but you can see they're all different sizes. There's this D ring at the top. So she sent this for my larger plates. She sent the four inch for some of the average size plates like the 11 inch plates and then she sent smaller ones for the really small plates like this little seven inch plate when you get on the website she will have complete instructions they're printed out when you order them you get these instructions as well but these instructions are also on the website I will be sure to link all of her information for her shop down below in the description now if you don't know where the description is just look just down below the video where the title is and just below that, you'll see a little area. It'll either say 
see more or more and then three dots you tap that and it expands and it opens up to give you all the information that i share with you in each one of our videos and i will include a link to the website so that you can get some of these plate hangers for yourself you'll see all the instructions she also includes a little video how to hang plates using these discs and all the information about these time tested now listen they've tested these for 40 years they they work all the directions all the measurements that you might need for your individual plates it's all on there the first thing I did was I spread out all my plates by size and I'm going to work in groups I have each one grouped out even the silver these work on silver towel laid down because it can get kind of a little bit messy only because we're using water so this technique is really simple but I will have to kind of work in groups mostly because I have so many plates you might not have that many I'm gonna have this many so I needed the space let's work on this stack of the nine inch plates to get started there all the hangers are gonna go on the back and these are the hangers that I'm going to use these four inch ones and I know that they're going to cover just fine that one's gonna fit fine this one here that's a little bit big I might cut off the extra and then you're going to notice this one has this ridge a lot of ironstone plates will have a ridge like that and you can see that it kind of overhangs a little bit so I think what I'm going to do well number one I just looked at the measurement on the directions and a plate up to eight inches can take a three inch diameter disc and I have a three inch one here so I'm going to use that and it's going to fit much better than the four inch and I'll save this for another plate the first step is to dampen the back of this now there is a substance on the back of here these are kind of like really stiff paper when you get them and they have this glue you can kind of see there in the light they have a glue on there that has to be activated and it's easy to activate it and it just takes a couple of minutes so all you have to do is get your fingers wet and work it into the glue you might have to re-wet your fingers a couple of times and you just moisten that really well on the back I'll get all three of them kind of started then I'll show you what's going on on here. Now after just about a minute, let's see if I can show you what's happening is that glue is getting activated and there's a bit of a milky white film that starts to create and it's definitely shiny. I don't think it's showing up. This one here is completely dry. This was this is getting that milky substance to come and that's the glue activating so you first of all apply the bit of water and get it really worked in for a couple of minutes you let it sit then you come back and you apply more water to those areas and you let it sit a few more minutes you want to be sure that that glue is fully activated. And by the way, they soften up somewhat when the glue starts to activate, but you want to make sure that it's completely activated so that it will adhere to the plate really well. Let's talk about the plate themselves for just a second. You see, I've got them all laid out. Now these discs will work on this kind of plate, these ironstone plates, ceramic plates. It will work on metal. It works on unfinished wood. You'll see when you go to the website, there are all sorts of applications for this. You want to be sure though that your plates are clean. So I have completely scrubbed them with just regular dish soap. I rinsed them really well and then I dried them. That you want to make sure that there's no dirt, oil, residue of any kind because you want you want these discs to stick to that plate really well so they'll stay on your wall and not come crashing down. All right, everything's set up. Got all the discs are ready to go. Now this one is going to take this, this size disc. This is pretty easy to do. All you do is flip it over. You pay attention to where the D ring is to make sure that it's at the top. You could measure if you want. Now I'm not big on measuring, so I'm not going to, but if you're not sure, you could measure. I'm going to eyeball mine. I'm gonna place it down where I think the center is, pretty close to it. I'm okay with that. And then you just kind of work out any of the bubbles. You see there, it does slide around just a little bit. So you wanna be careful of that, but you just kind of push out from the center and work all the bubbles out. You wanna make sure that you have a really good adhesion and that little bit of glue coming out is a good sign of that. The ridge on this one is not deep enough, so I'm not too worried about that. 
that. Just want to make sure that you have it all securely down. Now, once you get all of this pressed down and secured on there, you have to let it dry 24 hours. So make sure you have a good place to have all your plates spread out. Now I have a lot, so my whole kitchen island is going to be spread out. I don't know where we're going to have dinner. We'll figure that out later. All right, it's time to get them all on. So let's get to it. Once I got all of the hangers on the back of the iron stone plates and the silver platters, I allowed these to dry overnight. I think actually they dried for two whole days because I just couldn't get back to it. And they were really secure. Now a good idea is to take that D ring there and kind of tug at it with your finger. Make sure that the disc is completely adhered to your plate. You do not want one of your iron stone plates breaking in the middle of the night, trust me. I also decided to go ahead and polish that other candlestick that I found. And I like to use this product. It's called Earth Bright. It's wonderful on metals. I'll link it down below in the description. Let's get these brass sconces up on the wall. So I just eyeballed it to see where I wanted them to be. And I used the glass thinking also that there would be a taper candle there. Then I used my drill and I just marked little holes of where those mollies would go. I had to put a larger drill bit to match the molly so that I could just use my thumb and press in the molly. I also used a little hammer and just kind of tapped it in, but you can also press it in with your thumb. Then it was time to put these brass sconces on and I started to attach them. And then I realized that this whole thing will come apart, which would make it much easier to put on the wall. I, I knew that brass pieces came apart like that. I just forgot. That's a new thing for me. I forget a lot of things. And there it is. Uh, these couldn't be easier. They're so pretty up on the wall. So I, I did the same thing. Well, then when I got to the second one, I realized that that part came apart as well. All of these parts and pieces on these brass kind of things usually screw apart just like that. And that makes it nice for cleaning. And it certainly made, made it really nice for hanging because my drill would not fit very well around the decorative part of that candle holder. My husband picked up this variety sized pack of picture hanging hooks. And I used the largest ones for the largest plates, obviously, and then the smaller ones for the smaller plates. And I just got them all attached. These are the kind of hooks that go in at an angle against the drywall. So they're nice and secure. All of the hooks are up and I used the ones that I thought would fit the weight of that certain piece. Some of them, I definitely used heavier ones on the larger platters. This one actually hit a stud. So even though it's loose, it is in a stud. This one isn't, but it was one of the larger ones. And then some of the smaller ones like this, I could use for the lighter weight silver platters. They're not as heavy. So one thing I want to mention, having this whole thing designed out on Canva was a huge help. And then having these paper templates, even though it was time consuming, oh my gosh, it just made the whole process easy. So what I did was I put the nail in for each one, you know, the holder for each one. Then as I knew I was all finished with that particular piece, I stacked them up because I kept getting this whole thing confused throughout the whole process. And well, you saw all that. And I still wound up with one plate left over. I'm not sure what happened, but I have an additional plate. If I find a place to put it once I get everything up, I might add it. Now it's just time to take all the paper down and put the plates up. This is the fun part.
And here is the final look. What do you think? Isn't it so pretty? I love the way that this looks. I love that I have a variety of ironstone plates in different colors and tones and textures. Some are white, some are off-white. I have a little bit of color there. Loving all the silver platters. And there is one that I think I want to replace. See the one above the right-hand candle. It it is a little rough. So if I find another silver plate, I'm going to replace it. For now, it's perfect. But I love the ones with that def decorative scalloped edge. And then the one was a bowl and a lid, and I used those as two separate pieces. All of these pieces only cost me anywhere from $1 to $5. I got such a deal. Like that mirror, for instance, I think was only $7.99, which is unbelievable. Maybe you're wondering about that faux fireplace that we have. I've written a blog post and I will link it down below giving you step-by-step -step instructions. And I also have a video showing you how to make this kind of faux fireplace. Can you guess what it's made out of? I would love to know what you think of this plate hanging wall, this wall, silver and ironstone hanging display, This, these plates on a wall. Like what is this called? Plate wall display, how to hang plates on a wall, unusual wall decor. I don't know, what are we gonna call it? I don't know what we're gonna call it. Anyway, it's gorgeous. I don't know what to call this thing, but it's beautiful. If you have a suggestion of what I should call this, please let me know down in the comments. That is a work of art and we used pieces from the thrift store and from antique shops that I've collected for months now and we hung them to make an unusual wall decor that you're not going to see anywhere else. I encourage you to start thrifting and antiquing so that you can get a beautiful collection of pieces just like this so that you can make your own plate wall display. I couldn't have done it without Vanessa. These discs that Vanessa sent me made this project so easy. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I also hope, most of all, I hope that you are inspired to do something beautiful for your home. Go thrifting and go antiquing. Find some thrifted and antique pieces. Start collecting so that you can make something so beautiful out of pieces of history. I can't stop looking at it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you need any of the supplies that I've talked about in this video, like these, I'm going to have them linked down below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.